neurological examination of the spinal cord and nerve roots, the thoracic spine, neurological evaluation of individual nerve roots. There are 12 vertebrae in the thoracic region. The spinal canal in the thoracic region is relatively small. The spinal cord could be easily injured in this area. Pain in the thoracic region can occur due to thoracic disc herniation or different types of etiology such as cardiovascular, retroperitoneal, neoplastic, or thoracic spine conditions. A point of consideration is the thoracic disc herniation. In general, herniated thoracic discs can be found in about 40% of asymptomatic people. It usually occurs during the fifth decade of life. It occurs more in the lower thoracic region with 75% of all thoracic disc herniation occur between T8 and T12, and the most common level involved is T11, T12. What are the findings in thoracic disc herniation? The patient can get radiculopathy due to irritation of the thoracic nerve roots, and compression of the spinal cord can easily occur due to a small thoracic spinal canal, and the patient can get myelopathy. So you may find radiculopathy, and you may find myelopathy, or both. Axial back pain or chest pain is a common finding. The axial pain usually involves the mid to lower thoracic region. The radicular pain usually starts in the back and radiates anteriorly like a band to the anterior chest wall. The pain runs along the course of the intercostal nerve and goes anteriorly towards the ribs. Myelopathy can occur. The patient can have gait disturbance, leg weakness, bladder and bowel dysfunction. On examination, you may find upper motor neuron findings such as clonus, hyperreflexia, and positive Babinski sign. And the patient may have wide based gait during ambulation. The patient will have normal reflexes in the upper extremities and the hyperreflexia in the lower extremities. If you find the hyperreflexia of the upper extremities, then the patient has cervical spinal cord compression. Disc herniation between T11 and T12 may affect the conus medullaris and this lesion may affect the bladder function. The diagnosis of thoracic disc herniation is usually difficult. The diagnosis is usually confirmed by an MRI. The MRIs may have a high false positive rate. So when they studied asymptomatic individuals, about 70% of these asymptomatic individuals have thoracic disc abnormalities. And about 35% have disc herniation. And about 30% of these patients have spinal cord compression. Despite these findings, these people were asymptomatic and not complaining. The treatment Non-operative treatment is used in the majority of cases and it includes non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications and physiotherapy. The majority of patients will improve with non-operative treatment. Surgery is indicated when the pain is severe and not responding to long periods of conservative treatment. 
or when you have thoracic disc herniation with myelopathy due to compression of the thoracic spinal cord. There is a debate between disc removal alone and disc removal combined with fusion. Posterior laminectomy and disc excision had the highest rate of neurological deficit. Thoracic disc herniation are usually managed safely by an anterior approach or posterolateral approach that will include costotransversectomy. The anterior approach is used for central disc herniation and may cause intercostal neuralgia. The lateral or costotransversectomy is used for lateral disc herniation. So let's take disc herniation at different levels in the thoracic spine. T1 and T2 disc herniation. It will affect T1 nerve root. And the sensation, this is the area of sensation that is supplied by T1 nerve root. It is around the medial side of the elbow. The motor is the interosseous muscles causing abduction and adduction of the fingers. T2 nerve root, you can see the area of sensation of T2 nerve root as illustrated in this diagram. T3 is the third intercostal space. The nebel is T4. The xiphoid process is T7. The umbilicus is T10. The groin is T12. All these are great landmarks in evaluating the sensory changes of the thoracic nerve roots, and it may help you in defining the level of injury of the patient. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.